Welcome to this EdTech Teacher video tutorial on using Scratch Junior on the iPad. So we will begin the process by opening up Scratch Junior and tapping on the home icon to enter into the home screen. You can see here you can click the plus sign to begin a new project. Scratch Junior is broken up into three main segments. On the left hand side you can add characters to your project, which I'm doing now by tapping on the add character function. You can see there's a number of characters to choose from. I'm going to scroll down and pick the character here with the blue, green t-shirt on. Then I'll hit the check mark. That character is now part of my project. I can tap in the middle of the screen to manipulate the original location of the character. If I want to modify the character, I can tap on the paintbrush icon. And you'll notice this character has an empty face. To fill it, I can tap on the camera on the left and then on that open space. And it allows me to use the front facing camera to add my picture or a picture of anyone in the room to that particular character. I can hit the check mark and now the character is added. So you can see with any character on the left hand side, you can tap the paintbrush icon to edit the character. If you'd like to delete, simply tap and hold and you can delete the character. On the left hand side, I can add another character to this scene and I can make those characters interact. On the right hand side, vertically, we have the various scenes of the project. You can see now we have one character included in scene one of the project. We can have up to three different scenes in the project and we can make those scenes connect. So here I am adding another character to my project. So you can see on the left hand side, we have two characters in scene one. Now, when I add a second scene to the project, I'd have to also make those characters appear in scene two. So on the right hand side, I added a second scene. But instead of having the generic cat icon, I would like to add the character that I customized earlier that is still in the app, and then I'll add the same blue character to scene two. So now we have the same character starting off in scene one, and they will carry over into scene two. The next thing we are able to do in Scratch Junior is customize the backgrounds of any scene. In scene one, I tapped on the small mountain range icon, and that allows me to edit the background You'll notice in Scratch Junior, there's a number of generic backgrounds that already exist in the app, and I've selected one of them here. In the second scene, I'm going to customize it, and I will add a photograph of the location where I actually am right now. So I tapped on scene two, and instead of tapping on the pre-existing background, I'm going to tap on the white background and the paintbrush icon to customize it. So this is my background scene. To customize this with a photograph, I will tap on the camera icon in the bottom right and then tap anywhere on the screen and that will initiate my camera. So here I'm going to take a picture of this playroom, hit the check mark, and that will become the background of scene two. One important thing to keep in mind in Scratch Junior is that you cannot import pictures from the camera roll as backgrounds. They have to be live photographs from where you are with your iPad at the time. So now let's get into coding these characters to bring our story to life. To begin coding, I'm going to set the starting location for one of my characters just by dragging them in the center of the screen. My first option is to click a beginning mechanism. In this case, I'm going to use the green flag option. In the top right hand corner of the app, you'll see the green flag and that will begin the small code that I'm writing on the bottom of the app. Now it's simply drag and drop. So in this instance, when you tap the green flag, my character will move to the right one. He will get a little bit bigger. I will have him say something with a text bubble. He'll get a little bit smaller. Let me go back to my directionals now with the blue icon. I'll have him move forward. And this is all drag and drop. So I'm dragging these small block elements down into the screen to set the code for my small character. So at any point, by tapping on the green flag in the top right hand corner, I'm able to test the script and see how it'll work out. So I'll tap on the green flag and it will run through this code. So it didn't quite work out the way I wanted, so I'm going to tap on the blue back to start button in the top right hand corner to bring my character back to the start. Now what I'm able to do is modify the code. I can change the length of each option of movement, I can change the sizing. You can see here I'm changing the text of what my character is going to say. And then at any point again, I can tap on the green flag to run this again and see if the time in and the distances that I selected for the various movement blocks are going to be accurate and tell the story that I'd like to in the program. 
So I'll hit the green button one more time and let this run and see how it plays out. So you can see the alignment wasn't quite, wasn't quite right. So I'll tap on the blue back to start button. And now I'm going to adjust the distance to the right, distance up and distance right. I want my character to walk across the screen, say hello to his blue friend, walk up to the cabin, and then get a little bit smaller as if it's going to go into the cabin. So let's see how this works out. That worked out pretty well. But now I'd like to add to the script a little bit on the bottom. I'm going to add one more discussion bubble. And then I'm going to add another feature to make my character disappear, to make it look like he's disappearing into the house or into that cabin. So as this is playing out, another important thing to keep in mind is that you write the script for each character independently of, independently of the other one. So while we're watching the script for my green character play out, and there he is stopping to talk to his blue friend, he'll move over, move up, get smaller, have one more message, and then I'm going to have get him get smaller and disappear. There is no code for the blue character yet, so I have to write that one separately of the green character. And I'll go into that process next. So we'll test this one more time. And there he disappears into the little house. So now when I tap on my blue character on the left, I can begin to write the script for that character. One important thing to keep in mind is that if I'm going to have the characters begin when I tap on the green start flag, I'll have to make my blue character wait before his code begins because I want him to react to the green character. So it looks like my green character is all set. So I'll hit the blue back to start button, tap on my blue character and begin writing the code for my blue character. So now it's time to work with the blue character. So I'm going to tap on my yellow toolbar across the left and choose the green flag start option. There are other start options like tap a character or when a character bumps into you, but I like using the green flag. Now, because I want my blue character to react to the green character, I'm adding a timer option, and I'm going to make him wait for 60 moment increments. Those aren't 60 seconds. It's kind of Scratch Jr.'s own time uh, measurement. So now we'll test this out. I'll hit the green flag, and as I tap the green flag, my green character will start, and my blue character will start all at the same time. So you can see the blue character will wait 60, move over 5, move up 6, get small, and then disappear. So I want him to follow the green character into the house. He's moving over. So I can see he started a little bit too early and he didn't go up quite high enough. So now I'm gonna go back to start by tapping the blue back arrow, adjust his wait time to 80, adjust his movements vertically, and I made a mistake there changing it to one, so I'll have to fix that code once we run through it. And eventually what I want to happen is my green character disappears into the cabin, my blue character follows and will disappear as well. So one last adjustment to the movement upwards. We'll back to start, tap the green flag to run this again and see if our code is accurate. And now my blue character is following and disappearing. So now that we have our script working accurately for the first scene, I'm going to tap on my green character and add a new function. By tapping on this red button, I can make scene one continue on to scene two. And you can see there, I dragged that element from the red toolbar down to my workspace. So now when I run scene one, it will jump directly to scene two. So in scene two, I'm going to demonstrate a few new features. One of them is recording audio. I'll tap on the green audio button and the new microphone feature. This allows me to record my voice as a small audio element, and now that becomes an element that I can add to my script just like every other movement feature or size feature. So in scene two, upon touching the green flag, I will have my blue character speak some audio that I just recorded, and then add some movement to what he's doing. Another feature that I'll demonstrate is the looping feature. So if I wanted my character to walk in a circle in the room, instead of adding forward, up, down, left, up, over and over again, what I'm going to do is add those movement features inside of a looping block. So in this instance, my character is going to move over, down, left, and up 
five clicks and I'll have that repeat twice. Tap on the green flag and it will begin the little program. So my character is speaking and you can see here that my alignment was off. So I'm going to change the start location of my blue character just by dragging him and then I'll run the script again and see how it plays out this time. So he's speaking over, down, back, up and it will loop twice. So the looping feature and the audio feature are really helpful if you want to tell a more complex story. So the next feature to cover is exporting. In the top right hand corner of Scratch Jr. there's a small yellow block. If you tap on that block you'll get the option to email or airdrop. If you tap on airdrop you can export your Scratch Jr. project to any social media platform, storage or sharing platform. In this instance I'm going to export my project up to Google Drive. So the project has been exported to Google Drive. I will export again to demonstrate a few other features. If you have iOS 11, you can send to the local files app or pick any other storage or sharing platform. So now in Google Drive, you can see I have a project3.sjr for Scratch Junior file. Now Google Drive and most platforms won't open this, but I can select open in and then select my destination, which would be Google Drive. This allows me to export a project, share a project, and have another user download the project. And you can see it here, the package up ribbon means I've downloaded someone else's project, Project 4 with the blue ribbon. That's everything you need to get started with Scratch Junior. Thanks for watching this EdTech Teacher video tutorial.